<laughs> all right, you're welcome back to the Bars GEA Club here in Cork City. Everybody all right? So we're going to turn our attention back to football because Saturday is Munster football final day and it is Cork against Kerry. I'm going to bring back out on stage Niall Cahillan, Dunnock O'Connor and Daniel Goulding. Come on, lads. And also we're delighted to be joined by the Cork ladies football captain, Darren O'Sullivan. <laughs> you don't have to squeeze in there. I got you. So we've had uh, people on stage tonight of one All Ireland, two All Ireland, three. You've got what? Four. Mm -hmm. How many have you got, Darren? I have six. Jesus, uh, <laughs> lads. Not bad. No. Nope. And a monster <laughs> title yet again this weekend. Yeah, Just last gone. weekend we played um, Waterford down in Dungarvan. Um, we struggled massively in the first half. We're haunted going four points up. Um, but the girls put in a massive shift in the second half and we ended up winning, I think, 2.14 to nine points. So did a bit of celebrating um, last weekend. And much like in the men's game, all eyes on Dublin and a bit of revenge for last year. Yeah, look, you do have to take it game by game. I know it's a, a cliche, but at the moment, Dublin are um, the standard bearers. They are the king kingpings at the moment so um, they've set the standard we're chasing them um, when I first came on the panel I suppose I came into a team with the likes of um, Breach Corkery, Rena Buckley, uh, Breed Stack, Angela Walsh um, winning all Ireland was their bread and butter um, and just overnight then um, things changed and we've lost the last two all Ireland finals um, but hopefully Dublin are going for three in a row now and hopefully we can put a stop to that. That must have been an incredible setup to come into, that sort of culture that any team in any sport would want, this culture of winning consistently and driving each other on. What was that like coming in as probably what, a teenager at that stage? Yeah, I was 16 when I first started playing um, with the Cork team. Um, but that it was it. It was a winning mentality. Um, losing wasn't spoken of, whether we were playing the Douglas boys in a challenge match or whether you're up in Crow Park, um, nothing besides a win was acceptable. I suppose like when you're younger, you're going for the enjoyment and the crack and meeting your friends, but at inter-county level, the fun is in the winning, I find anyway, like no one <laughs> looks back at a defeat and said, God, that was great crack. Um, <laughs> do you know, uh, like it's the crack, winning with your best friends is, is what it's about. You're the captain this year. And a lot of those senior players that you spoke about there have started to retire over the last couple of years and there's probably a bit of a changing of the guard. Do you talk to them as, as they're leaving and when you meet up socially about what it was that, that created that culture that was able to maintain it so that, it, that it's not lost? Because we see in, again, we see in countless sports that teams go on this dominant run and then it can just fade out. Have you spoken about that of making sure that doesn't happen? Um, yeah, I suppose Cork is obviously really proud um, footballing in Hurling County. Um, we hate losing and we do want to get back on, on top. I was talking to Valerie Mulcahy um, last week and like we had some of our, our best days winning and it's hard to put your, your finger on it, what, what got us there. Um, it's, it's a tough one, like we, we're kind of um, in a bit of a transition period at the moment, I suppose. Um, there's been question marks, um, I suppose like the, the men's team, there's been question marks asked about them. Um, but look, all we can do is take it game by game um, and try to get back to, to Crow Park in September. When we sit down at the start of the year, that's our, our goal. Uh, league final or monster final is good, but you're not going to reflect on the year and be happy with that. We want to be back in, in Crow Park in September, lifting the Brendan Martin Cup. And of course, you did still end last year with an All-Ireland, with the club, with Mourne Abbey. For, for people here, for people listening at home who don't know the story of Mourne Abbey, you've come so close for so many years, finally got over the line last year, but like the journey that club has been on over the last decade or so, through junior, intermediate to winning senior All-Irelands, can you talk to us a bit about that? Yeah, so we won our first um, county final in 2014 with Mourne Abbey. Um, we won the Munster final and somehow we got to the All-Ireland final that year, got beaten. Went back in 2015, won the county, won the Munster, lost the All-Ireland final. 2016, county, Munster, lost the All-Ireland semi. 2017, county, Munster, lost the All-Ireland final. And 2018... <laughs> County Monster and All Ireland 
Uh, yeah, look, it's pretty simple. We were um, heartbroken and it made last year um, unbelievable. It was definitely the best day in my sporting career. Yeah, to do it with the club again, to do it with your friends. Yeah, that's it. I have three sisters on the panel. <laughs> I have two cousins. Um, my dad and my uncle, probably nepotism, were involved. Um, and look, it's as I said, I'm living with two of the girls. I am... Um, I played with and won the All Ireland final with there, or the eighth of December, twenty eighteen was the, the best day in my sporting career. Yeah. Right. It doesn't make it any easier, I guess, an All Ireland final day. But a lot of those Dublin footballers went through something similar of losing All Ireland finals, of losing close finals, and have finally got over the line and have have kicked on a gear. Like what they've done in terms of ladies GEA over the last couple of years, you're not going to, with your player, you're not going to sit back and look and go, this is a good thing for the game and the crowds that they're bringing to matches and the increased attention, I think probably just because it's Dublin, but have you noticed over the last couple of years a, a greater appreciation of ladies football? Yeah, absolutely. It's the fastest scoring sport in Ireland at the moment. Um, there's a massive 2020 campaign drive to increase in attendance and um, participation, um, I suppose media coverage, and it is going in the right direction. Um, like if you take this year alone, we had double headers with the men's game um, down in Park Irene, and we played up in Mayo against or in front of the men's Mayo football team. And like that's what you want. There's a championship buzz about those matches. Um, it is going in the right direction, but I feel like any time I do an interview or talk to people, we're kind of giving out about the standards of ladies football but until it reaches the the male equivalent i suppose our male counterparts until we reach that i don't think we'll um be be satisfied there's still room for for improvement how far do you think you have to go and what do you think you have to do to get there um like even small stuff i suppose this week um mayo lgfa um mm. made a partnership um with top oil i think um just to cover travel expenses like, I know it's an amateur sport, um, no one expects to get paid for it, we're doing it for the love of it, but I don't think you should be out of pocket for it either. Like, we have Melissa... Do you get Duncan. your expenses covered? No. I, sp I spoke about it on yeah. my podcast this morning, I, I couldn't believe it that... I, I, would, I just was shocked, I couldn't believe that you're not getting... As you said, you'd want to get paid, mm. and mileage isn't paying for players really, it's just making up for money spent. But, like, yeah, like we have a lot of students in, in college now say, Take Melissa Duggan, she was player of the match there on Sunday in the Monster final. Um, she comes down from Dublin three nights a week, um, of her own at her own cost. Like, to me, that's not right. Um, like, as I said, it seems like we're always giving out, but until we, we close that gap, I don't think we'll be, we'll be content. Basically the very least is everybody should be getting mileage for driving to train like that's Absolutely, not that's yeah. not like you don't worry about saying i'm always <laughs> giving out like that's oh, we'll give yeah. out for you on that behalf <laughs> because i spent two minutes giving out this morning about it and uh, off the ball i just i just when i read the article i was like so what does this mean that everybody's driving around the country playing ladies football mm. not getting paid or for the for the miles not getting mm. uh, uh, being able to reimburse themselves because the amount that you're we that we all put into it and the amount of time away from loved ones and family, mm. and a lot of it is travelling. If you someone driving up and down to Dublin three times a week, that's about 300 quid. Mm -hmm. Like, that's big expense to her to, to represent her county, and that, shouldn't be, that should not be stood for in any organisation. Yeah, I couldn't believe it listening this morning. I don't know how I was so naive to just assume, assume. that actually any inter-county player at any level, male or female, would be getting at the very least expenses, never mind playing for the most successful county around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like when I started uh, back in 2012, like getting a hot shower after a match was, you were doing well, like now we've, we have come a long way. So like hopefully it will, we have to stay positive. I think um, we are going in the right direction and I think um, we have made huge leaps and bounds. Um, the likes of Super Value getting behind us. Um, supporting us i suppose uh we are narrowing that that gap between male and female um equality in sport i have two small girls there and keep it going <laughs> <laughs> keep it going i'll back you up i guess just before we leave that then maybe and it's always a debate about the potential merging of the ladies gaelic football association with the gea and people seem to see pros and cons you'd imagine one of the pros is is that if ladies football and camogie come under the gea umbrella 
it would be impossible for them not to have the same standards across the board. Yeah, they couldn't... Or again, maybe I'm being incredibly naive with this. No, no, no. It's, it, like, no, it's, you're not being naive. No, you couldn't be, um, I suppose, treating people differently. If we were under the same umbrella, um, we'd have to be treated um, accordingly. But, and I suppose then the other thing is, if ladies, Gaelic football and Camogie were under the same umbrella, we'd be avoiding uh, fixture clashes. You've the likes of Libby Coventry and Hannah Looney playing both. Um, and that's a constant battle as well. So I think that would solve um, a lot as well. You've gone about um, closing the gap on Dublin in a pretty unique way here in Cork by getting their best player to sign for your club. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. Um, yeah, so Noel he Healy um, from Dublin um, it was player of the year, I think, in 2017. Um, and she's come playing with Mornabi this year. So she's um, working in Cork, living in Mornabi. Um, and she's an unbelievable addition to have. Um, like the half forward line now going into our league final on Sunday will be Kira Breed, O'Sullivan, and Noel Healy. So that's um, that's positive. Pretty fighting yeah. prospect. <laughs> uh, the fair play for the fellow who built the house in Moran Abbey for her. <laughs> <laughs> she's getting mileage. <laughs> that no comment again. Yeah, she's getting mileage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we should mention as well, because you've uh, been able to give us a very good insight into the Cork preparation for the Munster final, because you're going out with the Cork captain, Ian Maguire. Mm. <laughs> How confident is he? Um, what, what, what's he told you? No, How many changes God, to the 15 tell, named? <laughs> he tell me nothing. Um, yeah, look, I suppose I read an article during the week by, um, I think it was Noel O'Leary, and he said just that things come in cycles. Like when I was growing up, Dunamore won 12 ladies football county titles in a row, went on winning all Ireland's. And now Dunamore down playing junior football, things change. And look, Cork haven't won a senior men's month of final since 2012. Hopefully, it, it has to happen um, at some stage. Hopefully Saturday is the day um, that things go their way. Um, and they get over the line against against Kerry. Darrell Shea was writing in the Irish Times yesterday in the most un Kerry like fashion and basically done cork down. Yeah. Said they don't have a hope in hell. Instead yeah. of the usual Kerry Yera attitude of bigging them up, he said, it ain't going to happen. He missed the meeting. He, 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 he missed the meeting. He missed our meeting. Uh, Is there some reverse psychology that we're just, are you operating at a higher plane now in terms <laughs> of your mind games in Kerry? I don't know. Um, I suppose Dara's looking at it in the point of view where, like we spoke about earlier on, Dara was in a team that was going against the lads non-stop and it was always, and he's probably going on, on the last few years' results, which have been very comfortable victories for Kerry. And There's nothing really telling you that it'll go different, but Dara should know that um, in a game of football, like last year, we weren't too smart last year, six minutes into the game, when Cork had 2-2 scored on us inside the first few minutes mm. and we're running against small angles. And I was talking to two lads outside, I said, like, that's what Cork needs to do again, they need to start, go for the juggle earlier and then learn from last year by actually maybe just kind of making sure they're not leaving themselves completely exposed at the back because that's what happened last year, they got the two goals, got two points, it was 2-2 two, two to one point, I think. And... Uh, yeah, they, they kind of kept going and left themselves open and carry counter attack and got quick answers. And there was, we talked about the down game earlier on that we played, like that one stone got ahead of us. They just they started going back. They started, you know, being really solid, trying to hit us in the counter attack, build on their lead. And that's what Cork are, they're a running counter attacking team. So start well, get, get, and, then, and then make sure you're solid at the back and make sure that you're not leaving space for Ganey and Clifford and these fellas. Um, and then Carrier in the other dressing room saying we'll try and make space for Ganey and Clifford so it's, it's um, so you'd have Cork as favourites yeah? yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah right, yeah <laughs> no I I, I I think Kerry will uh, win by about six points um, uh, I think it'll be closer than it was last year because from what I saw uh, Cork against Limerick look it's out there that, that people say that Kerry's weakness is the defence. So that's mm. Kerry's, Kerry's job and the, and the defensive six and the subs that come on need to put out an answer 
to a lot of people on, on Saturday. Have you seen any signs, enough signs during the league that they've improved defensively? I always still think it's hard to get out of your mind that All-Ireland semi-final against Mayo and just how exposed that Kerry defence was. Yeah, I think, I think midfield is such a... Um, I think people kind of isolate backs and isolate, isolate backs when you're not playing well or if your forward unit isn't playing well, it's always the forwards. If the backs units are getting hosed, it's the backs. The midfield is the kind of glue that will kind of, if they, if they win enough ball out in the middle of the field, it takes pressure off the backs. It gets more ball into your forwards. And I think without David Moore and for a lot of that, you know, that, that Mayo game in the league um, and, and certainly the, the, the Clare game, he got, he got black carded after like 13 minutes and he hasn't played much football at all all year, so we don't really know where he is. But he is, he is Kerry's Dara O'Shea, you know, he is the, you know, the best midfielder in Kerry since Dara O'Shea retired and he's our kind of, he's our go-to guy when, 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 when you're trying to win big games and... You know, I'd expect a big game out of him, and if he if, if he can have a big game along with Jack Barry, who's just been named midfield with him, if he can have a big game in the middle of the field, I think Cork will be under pressure because there'll be more ball going into the carry forwards than the backs, and it's up to Darren's boyfriend to put. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be he'll be eyeing up David Moore and, and trying to stop that because if they stop Kerry's midfield dominance, you saw what Clare did to Kerry in the second mm. half. Dave Moore went off. Kerry were under pressure all in the middle of the field. And Kerry went from being 10 points up to scraping over the line, really, in a way. And it, kind of, uh, and not re- it was a performance that didn't flatter anybody, I'll call it that way. And you've Cork in the semi-final, absolutely rotivating Limerick, uh, who drew, who only lost by a point to Clare about two weeks before that. So, um, it's interesting, yeah. Niall, if this was Kerry taking on any other county that were on their way down to Division 3, we'd expect them to win by double-digit scoreline. The fact that it's Cork Kerry, it's at Porky Cueve, the rivalry, the history, the belief in Cork people that they'll never say they're second best to any Kerry man. Like, does that count for something or like, is this a game that Kerry are just so professional now they, they see it through? I'm getting all confused anyway because I have one Kerry man telling us that we're no good and we have another fellow <laughs> here telling us how to beat That's them. That's what they want. So I, I'm getting all... Now, I suppose, look, the thing about amongst the final is, yeah, we're, we're, we, 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 we're going down to Division 3. However... Look, a Munster final can take a life of its own. Uh, it's very different to a, a bog standard league game between Cork and Kerry. Very different to anything with Cork and Limerick in football or Clare or Kerry and Clare. Anything. A Munster final can genuinely take a complete life of its own. Um, you know, we were going back to my time. We were flying high in 1990 and I think it was 91 Kerry came along and absolutely hosed us you know uh, from nowhere um, I'm not saying that that's going to happen in a Cork and Kerry situation on Sunday but uh, I certainly see signs uh, Limerick now and with all due respect to them in Park hearing the same night with pure reggae ball over stuff but however uh, and I hope there's no one here from him, right? But it, it was. <laughs> that was an old comic long ago before you were oh, right, okay. <laughs> But uh, however, um, uh, I just see signs that Cork were going in the right direction. Um, and I mean that, you know, we appeared to want to get the ball into the scoring area at very early on. You know, um, defensively, we look reasonably solid enough. Um, I'm not saying for one minute that we're going to go out and we're going to give Kerry a drubbing, but I genuinely think, no different than Kieran, I, I, I think genuinely that you're, you're talking about a couple of scores in this game. It could still be Kerry, but however, you know, was it 1983 we went down to the park, Thunder and Lightning final, um, and Cork had a goal in injury time. And there was there was no comeback from mm. Kerry. There was no time, and they were going for was it eleven monster titans in a row or something something crazy anyway. So they do take a bit of a life of their own, um, and I'm just hoping that Cork can go out and they can perform to the best of their ability, and you never know. Maybe we're clutching at straws, but you can look at the early stages of last year's final when Cork did get those early goals and, all right, they end up losing by 17 points. But even you think back to 2014, again, Kerry were strong favourites that year and they end up needing Fionn Fitzgerald and, what, 
It's about the fifth minute of injury time to kick this absolute wonder point to get a draw. I think, I think last year, like, I think, was it six or seven times Cork went up? Yeah, seven. And they, they actually hit the crossbar as well. We could have actually gone tin up and it came straight down the field instead of being tin up and, and, and all of a sudden four only four up. Hmm. Start, so, the start is big. The start is big and, and that's, where, that's where every team has a chance at the start of a game because it's nil-nil and if you, ha if you go if you go and, and bring the if Cork bring real edge to the game and they'll have to because you know with the backs doing okay against Limerick it's a different story when you've Clifford and Ganey and, mm. and the, Tommy Walsh and these fellas down there what so. do you mean by a real edge you just need to be oh, like have they got that physicality in them oh, physicality is you don't have to be you see the small Jack Russell don't you he, isn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't have too much physicality about him, but he won't back down. So, um, so yeah, you do. You, you know, it's it's you got to bring you got to cock nearly re, need to really ruffle Kerry's feathers and and go tearing at them from the start and see where it takes him. It might again, he could have two goals stuck in five minutes and it might get you nowhere, but it could get you. See, so you see, if you're a player and you're looking down, you see your defence wiring into fellas and you see your midfielders fighting on their back for every ball. There's a confidence comes in that, whereas if you're looking down, you see fellas lying down and, and, and just taking it. And there was a, uh, the, 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 the Kerry and Mayo 97 final, I was at it, I was in the Nelly stand. And Kerry were 4 0 up and going great. And next thing Mayo got a handy free in front of the goals, and Mara Sheridan put it down. And he clipped it over the bar. And I was watching him, he was jogging back out, and he was just a bit lax. Fucking Eamon Breen came in and knelt him with a shoulder. He didn't even see him coming and just blew him out of the way. But I remember that day kind of going, never, you know, never, never, that, that's age. Like, that's fella saying, you got that point now, but you won't get another one. Do you know, that kind of way. Whereas the easy thing for Eamon Breen to do there is just jog out where we're still 4-1 up. I'll go mark my man. But age is huge, especially in the Munster final, especially against Kerry and Cork. Do you see that purely as a mentality kind of thing that actually you can tune in in the dressing room beforehand and think, okay, we're talking about a team who maybe right now are at a different level, but if we get our heads right, we well, can contend, we can rattle them? Yeah, we're, we're Cork at the moment, like, if they don't have that mentality, they're at nothing because they're getting written off solid since, I'd say, myself and Dunica retired. We've been listening to it. And like, there's a couple of things for me about this game. Last year, Cork started off like a house on fire, got complacent. Around the middle eight, they stopped working hard. And that low carry to put a nice ball into their forwards. Any time you have a chance to get carry against carry, you have to beat them at the middle eight. You have to stop them putting a nice ball into their forwards because that's what they want. If they get a nice ball, they'll eat you alive. But you have to stop their middle eight dominance. They, they had two, three runners at a time coming through for 25 minutes of the, second, of the first half. And the second thing, Cork's other problem is they're not consistent enough. They, they'll play super football for 10 minutes but they need to string it together for 50 60 minutes and that's that's the big challenge for them like cork have very talented footballers um and on a given day one foot one on one they can beat any any player can beat another player but collectively to win a monster final they're going to have to put in a huge performance collectively for 65 plus minutes and i think the middle eight's the key battle it's all about the middle eight the full the full forward line Kerry have, you're not going to quieten them, so you need to stop the supply into them. And that, that's where I think Cork's big challenge is at middle eight and staying, having the work rate to mark them man on man and then ask questions of them going the other way. Would you have questions then about the mentality in this Cork squad at the moment? When you're talking about them getting complacent against Kerry because they've gone six, seven points up early on, like how does that happen? in a Munster final, when even last year you're massive underdogs, that you get the perfect start and still somehow you get complacent after that? Um, yeah, well, I think you said there, you know, is it something they'll do in the dressing room? It's, I don't think so. It's something that they have to be uh, thinking about the last six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks when they finish the league. You know, they have to be really kind of, I suppose, uh, Cork probably couldn't afford to take Limerick for granted, but I think deep down, you know, they all probably knew they would get over Limerick. And like they would be meeting Kerry in the Munster final, so like if they're not if they're not at the edge of their seats with the last six weeks looking forward to this game, then you know they probably shouldn't be there. And I think you know hearing bits and pieces here and there, I think they are really looking forward to this game. And um, I saw a few league games this year. One really stuck out with me against Donegal. I, I really thought they were very impressive that day. They ended up losing the game by seven points, I think, but 
like there was seven minutes injury time. Donegal got one, two, or one, three in injury time. So like we see where Donegal have gone since. Yeah. Cork, so like we're down to twelve minutes as well, aren't they? Yeah, there was a bit of a mix up with subs, but I, I wouldn't worry about that because the game had just <laughs> slipped. <laughs> disadvantage in the best of times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah. But the game had slipped to that stage. I think uh, Donegal had just gone two points up, but it was nearly in. But uh, I just thought Cork was so impressive for f- maybe. 10 minutes into the second, all the first half and 10 minutes into the second half. And I was saying to Kieran, did Cork are probably not at the moment in a, in a place that they can manage a game out, if you know what I mean. They, they probably need to learn that. And uh, nothing would please me more than them to, to learn it on Saturday evening with five minutes to go and learning how hmm. to play three point, uh, up three points to play it out. But... Against Donegal, you could see it with 10 minutes to go when Donegal got two points in a row. You could see, like, you could say, geez, Donegal, I've got to hit him here. So I think if Cork can maybe learn from that and learn from last year, like, when Stephen O'Brien got the goal last year, the gates just opened, like, and they just hit four or five more points in a row, and that, that was game over then. So if they can just learn how to really go at teams aggressively, but also be able to maybe step off and, and, and concede a point or two in 10 minutes rather than one, three or four in 10 minutes. I think, I think they'll have a chance. They, they've beaten Dublin and Galway in trial game recently. Is like that so Pat Spillane talking there on our Kieran Donnelly? Uh, uh, I, I, so I, I heard they beat Dublin by four points. Am I wrong? <laughs> the there. what are you hearing? Am I wrong? I, I didn't that. hear. I go well actually. <laughs> oh. And if you give me note about the carry man. You're, 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 you're the carry man. <laughs> <laughs> they are learning. Splant sent that email out a couple of weeks ago. Ah, I tell you no. I tell you no. I think I, I, you never miss a meeting. I didn't hear it from Splant anyway. I heard it from somebody else. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like if that if that is true, we're going to get nothing off the tree below on the coach there. So <laughs> if that is if that is true, it tells you that what we saw in the first twenty minutes against Limerick, where they were really good. That obviously tells you that maybe that's mm. coming from the confidence of how they played in those trial games, um, and confidence is a is a is a leading weapon in sport. Like you know, and if if they have probably took a bad beating last year in the Munster final, and you know, obviously the lead this year was tough for them, and they would have been very unsure of themselves, I'd say, after that. But if they've gone and had them few trial games and done well and got a bit of confidence, and then go out and do really well against against Limerick. You know, they should be looking at Kerry because, you know, I was a part of the Kerry team. We didn't get out of the Super 8s last year. That's, that's the facts of it. You know, we, we, we weren't in an All-Ireland semi-final, you know, so we're, no, we're, we're, we're not, on, we're not on, the, on, on cloud nine either at the moment. Well, you're also so, Rams. Well, we're trying to find ourselves as well. Like, this truth be told, like, we played well in the league with some good results, but we got badly beaten by Mayo. Um, Especially in the second half, you know. Uh, so Kerry, and then Clare, the last day wasn't overly great, and you've the, you've a good you've four or five hamstring injuries. I think James been one of them, who's who will be out on on uh, for the weekend. So they'll be a bit un, they'll be a bit unsure, and that's what I'm talking about. That's where Cork have to really come with that um, with that because if if a team are kind of slightly unsure about themselves. Um, if you take it easy on them early on and they start pipping over a few points and they get a few goals, the next thing the confidence comes back into them. They're a hard animal to stop then. But if they're a bit, if they're teetering a small bit and you can go for the juggler and really test their pulse, yeah. And look, we, we, you know, we want to see a good Munster final on Saturday, mm. don't we? I don't want to see another 17. I'm not going down to Cox to see 17 points. Yeah, results. and that's, that's one of the issues, I guess, in terms of atmosphere around this game. Darren, you, you mentioned there about the benefits for you during the league of playing these games as double headers with the men's games where there were bigger crowds in, there's a bit more intensity, there's a bit more of a spark to the occasion and you know, good players rise to that. Is, is part of the issue for the Cork players on Saturday night is that just the general attitude, the shrug of the shoulders around Cork football now, it, it's not going to be a packed Porky Queeve, it'll be, you know, maybe be, if they got 30,000 they'll probably be quite happy with that. that, that there's just not the, the support behind them that they would want right now. Yeah, I think they're trying to maybe block that out. Like, it doesn't matter what anyone here on the couch thinks, anyone in the audience thinks. It's what the 25, 30 lads inside that dressing room believe on, on Saturday, whether they can go out and, and win. Like, when the ref throws in the ball, it's 15 against 15. Um, I suppose Cork of five Munster Championship final debutants on Saturday. They've nothing to fear. Like, 
not being blasé about it. Worst case, they got beaten last year by 20 points. Worst case scenario on Saturday, they go out and get beaten by 21. Like, they have nothing to fear. They should just go for it and probably easier said than done. But um, I think the, the lack of support won't bother them on, on Saturday. Um, if anything like it's preceded by the, the minor game, there would be a good crowd at that. If the minors can get a win, it'll set up a nice, nice atmosphere for the, the seniors then. We've seen already this year in the championship, Mayo, Tyrone, Monaghan, Galway exit the provincial championship. A lot of those were seen as the main contenders, which leaves Kerry, I think a lot of people seeing right now, as number two in the county, in the country behind Dublin. You mentioned that maybe we're still on the learning curve with this Kerry side as well, and he played against the great Kerry teams, probably the most hard-ass Kerry defence there's ever been, like some of the toughest players who've played the game. When you're looking at that Kerry defence right now, would you be licking your lips and thinking there's an opportunity here? Well, I suppose the, the proof is in how they've played over the last couple of years. I think when they've got to Crow Park, especially in the big space, they've probably got found out a bit. And... I think it even happened to them against Mayo again in the second half that day. So look, they're not out their vulnerabilities either. And as, as Kieran said, like if there's any bit of weakness in them, it's the perfect chance for Cork to exploit it. Um, but again, for Cork, and it was the same last year, if they don't win the middle eight, you can't get ball into that forward line. And Cork's forwards were starved the ball for the majority of the game last year, but bar the first 10 minutes. So like, I think where it is now, the half forward line, the half back line on breaks, marking their men, that's a huge part of Cork asking questions of that back line. Um, they have good forwards inside, like you've Brian Hurley like is flying after coming back from two crazy injuries and he's still going like and he wants it, he's hungry and they're all they're all hungry lads, but I suppose what you really need to do is set down to your task. Like they need to know exactly what they want to do and they're gonna have to execute it for the whole game. Um, but like that looking at it on paper, that Kerry backline is there to be ran at and have a go at. Now, that's not saying Kerry's backs could come out and you know, prove us all wrong and that's what they'll want to do, but if you can win around the middle and put Kerry on the back foot, you'll have a chance then, but again, I still think it comes down to winning your own kick out, challenging their kick out and not allowing Kerry's middle eight to dominate. Just before we wrap up then, I want to get your predictions. A lot of talk this week around Cork that it's not about moral victories, but is a moral victory actually enough on Saturday to run Kerry close to show that they can put in a 55-60 minute performance at the very least? Um, look, coming from where we have come from um, and, and, and slipping down the divisions in, in the league, I'd be very comfortable on Saturday evening if we were within a couple of scores of Kerry and, and in particular after last year, uh, I'd be thrilled to bits. If we had, if we turned them over, you know, but it, you have to be realistic as well. Um, and it was mentioned already, we have five debutants. Those mm. guys are only, they were playing under 20 last year, um, down in Trinity against Kerry. You know what I mean? We have to be realistic as well. Um, and I think if we can come within a score or two, we have made progress. Um, and if we're that close, who knows? Um, yeah, look, I'd have to agree with Niall, I think. Um, I'd be fairly friendly with a lot of the lads inside there, so I'd love to go and tell them after the match Saturday, look, I actually thought Kerry might beat you, and I'm glad you proved me wrong, but I suppose if you're realistic, um, I'd, look, if Cork put in a performance, and, you know, if Cork, uh, if you were able to come out of that game and say such and such fella played well and this fella played well, and... You know, looking forward to a couple of weeks' time for them to improve even more, then I think we, most of the Cork people would be happy. Mm. Darren, you mentioned at the start the five de debutants in a Munster final. It is a period of transition. It's all about, I guess, just gaining a bit of confidence now. Yeah, I don't know. Would the lads be happy with a moral victory? Um, I think any time you go out to compete, you go out to win. Um, I'm going to back Cork. Um, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, Play for the crowd. Yeah, yeah um, Stephen Sherlock to kick the winning point. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel? Um, I'll take a different slant and to be honest. I'm not sure this game is the be all and end all for this Cork team. If they win, fantastic. If they don't, it's the next game is the big game. 
getting into the Super 8 should be Cork's main target. Um, what you don't want to want is what happened the last couple of years and the, the Munster final being a total anti-climax for them and next thing the qualifiers are right off. So look, Cork will have to have in their mind they give it their best rattle. If they win it, fantastic, but you're back to work on the Tuesday night and if they, if they do lose, if they don't, obviously they're in the Super 8s, but if they lose, the next Tuesday night's the most important session of the year and they're getting ready for that game to get into the Super 8s because that team need high quality games in Crow Park together because they're a young outfit and they need confidence. The year Emmanuel, Kieran, I think starts, you come in and say five, six points, but then you've heard all this and you think, could be a close game, we'd be lucky to get out of Porky Cueve by a point. Um... No, look, I, what I think is what I, what I, is what I think. You know, I, I said I think Kerry will win by six or seven points because um, I just think with, if, Dave, if we get a good full day, game out of Dave Moran and Jack Barry in the middle of the field with the inside line we have, um, I, think we'll, I think we'll be okay. All right, I think we're done. It's been a long night here at the Bards. You've been a brilliant audience. Thanks a lot for hanging on so late. We've been here with thanks to Super Value, who are celebrating 10 years as sponsor of the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship. My thanks to all our guests. It was brilliant to get some club legends, Gerald McCarthy and Jer Cunningham and Tomás Mulcahy for coming along. And our guests on stage as well, uh, Niall Cahillan, to Dyrno Sullivan, to Dunnock O'Connor and to Daniel Goulding. And I know you booed him at the start of the night, but give it up as well for Kieran Donaghy. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Safe home. We'll talk to you soon.